Can I tell you uh, one of the thoughts that, for whatever reason, consumed my mind for about uh, an hour and a half during my silent meditation retreat? <laughs> I was thinking about Giraffes Can't Dance, this book, this, this demon slayer that crushes me on Amazon, always by like five spots when I launch a book. And I started thinking about how incredible it would be to take Jocko, the cartoon character, uh, as seen in the Jocko approved logo <laughs> on your tee and to have a parody of that book called Jocko can't dance <laughs> with like thought bubbles of what you're thinking throughout the book. In any case, for whatever reason, that is what my mind decided to settle on. And, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so confession over confession. Complete. So do you find that yourself that you say like, Oh, I'm not good at this or I'm going to avoid it. Or do you find yourself getting focused? Cause that, you know, you're talking about what Musashi's, what, what they described Musashi doing as earlier, which is I only worry about things that are beating me. Right. I only worry about the opponent that beat me. Just like the only book you think about is this book. Giraffes can't dance, which is the <laughs> one book that beats you because, and that's what you're focused on. You don't worry about these other books that you kick the crap out. of. I also just like talking about it because I love the fact that, that it's called giraffes can't dance. Yeah, and it kicks your ass. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you get focused on things that are that you shouldn't be focused on, or that you're wasting time on? Uh, I, I, you kind of know what you're good at. I, I do. Uh, I think that I've become better at working on or distinguishing between low level weaknesses and high level weaknesses. And what I mean by that is, if you imagine say a uh, people have seen like a champagne pyramid <laughs> where sometimes built at weddings where you, you stack up mm -hmm. all of these champagne glasses and you pour into one or it could be any type of glass and it cascades down into the others uh, or you could think of it through a domino analogy I, I, I use this analogy a lot looking at lead dominoes like what can I do if I have a task list let's say which of these five tasks will make all of the others easier or irrelevant and that'll help me sequence things in the right order so that i'm not wasting energy uh if i have 10 units of energy i'd rather focus on identifying at least to begin with the lead dominoes and so a high level weakness would be a we a lead domino something that has downstream negative effects on many different areas even uh that can compromise your strengths mm -hmm. right uh, so for me, for instance, I think uh, for a very long time, I viewed, uh, I only viewed impatience through the, the lens of the benefits of aggression because having a good offense has always been my model ever since I <laughs> became uh, fascinated by you know, Dan Gable, who is about as close to 100% offense, legendary mm -hmm. wrestling uh, competitor and coach. Uh, oh man, I have a lot of stories about Dan Gable. Uh, incredible, incredible guy. But uh, I, what I've realized in the last few years, for instance, is that there are low-level weaknesses. Let's say I am not a programmer. Uh, I am not good at A, B, C, D, or E skill that is more of a, a technician's craft. Mm -hmm. I will not spend time on those things if I can delegate it or right. outsource it. But if there are core psychological traits that are higher order that can negatively impact other things, then I've realized uh, for the long haul, uh, I do want to at least experiment with developing those capacities.